In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different from my usual model kit builds. I finally dipped my toes into the world of miniature painting. This is something I've been meaning to try for a while as the only little like figures I painted are the little pilot figures that come with a Gumpla. Now, while I don't really play tabletop war games, I've always been fascinated with the sculpts and designs of the models. I've also begun to read some of the fiction and dig into the lore of Warhammer 40k, and find myself being more and more drawn to the hobby. I see it as a great opportunity to try something different and learn something new. Experience is experience. What I've discovered is that while miniature painting is in the same wheelhouse of interests of the things I like, like model kits and painting, um, there's a lot of techniques and things you normally don't see Gunpla builders do. For example, the heavy emphasis on water-based acrylics and a huge array of concepts about brush painting techniques. Seriously, after watching all the big miniature painting channels on YouTube and doing research, I've gained a ton of respect for this hobby. Seriously, these folks are absolute pros. Their videos have been super helpful and are just a wealth of knowledge. Learning to film miniature painting is and has been super challenging. I won't lie, I absolutely rode the struggle bus the entire way through. Many times the camera would go off center and out of focus. I've been humbled to say the least. Anyways, my hope is that by just giving it a go and getting out of my comfort zone, I'll be able to increase my hobby skill set. So with that in mind, let's dive right in. In deciding what I wanted to paint first, I simply pick what looked cool to me browsing through the different 40k factions. Yeah, basic, I know. Dude, the map of the universe is insane. <sighs> so for my first minis, ultimately, I've decided to do 10 Necron Warriors from the previous 9th edition, the Andromedus box set. I found a really good deal on eBay and decided to just pull the trigger. For the uninitiated, here's some very quick lore. Necrons are basically these metallic and skeletal looking army of humanoid robots. They're an ancient civilization, who were once an organic species known as Necron Tyr, but were convinced by an interstellar force called the Catan into transferring their entire consciousness into mechanical bodies. This was possible through a process called biotransference. They were convinced this was the only way to achieve immortality and escape the high death rates from their toxic homeworld, but at great cost as they basically became a remorseless race of hive mind automatons, stripped of their individuality. The Necrons would then go into their deep sleep, but awaken to stalk the universe millions of years later. Yada yada yada, let's build and paint the cool cyborg skeleton things. First things first, we'll need to prep our miniatures for paint. Nothing new here if you've assembled any kind of plastic model kit, it's business as usual. The only caveat for myself this time is since I purchased these miniatures on eBay, I did not get a set of instructions, just the sprues and bases in this little baggie. Luckily scouring the internet, I found a PDF of the instructions through a post on the 40k subreddit. Thanks 40k community! So I went ahead and printed these out. Games Workshop designed these so you have several options of heads and weapons to choose for each mini, so you'll end up with extra parts. I went ahead and just chose a variety of what looked appealing to me and bagged the extra bits for later use. So. After going through the instructions and choosing the parts for each of my Necrons, I separated them into their own piles as to not mix them up. Once I had all my Necrons sorted out, I went ahead with my hobby knife, files, and sanding sticks and took time to remove all the gate marks and mold lines from the minis, as I don't want obvious surface imperfections to stick out through my paint job. Some parts I cleaned as sub-assemblies, and some were just easier to clean fully assembled. This was sort of a back and forth process, but I managed to get them all cleaned up after a couple hours. Another step I took was to drill out the gun barrels as they were all just flat where you'd normally see a hole on the ends of the rifles. To do this, I just made a little pilot hole by spinning my hobby knife in the center of each barrel. Then used the point of my round file to smooth the pilot hole a little more. Finally, with an appropriately sized micro drill bit, I just carefully drilled out the gun barrels through the pilot hole to create the detail. Any rough bits left over, I just cleaned with sanding twigs and files. A small and simple mod but in my opinion, makes a world of difference. Some minis are easier if you want to paint in sub-assemblies. A lot of times modelers prefer even painting the miniature first and decorating the base separately. There are several ways I could have gone about getting these Necrons built and painted. Ultimately, I decided that I'll just be painting them fully attached to their bases and then just painting and decorating the bases last. So once I had everything assembled, I just dabbed a bit of thin plastic cement in all the joints of my minis to fix everything firmly in place. I let that dry for about an hour, and then fix all the minis on their bases to wooden blocks using 3M double-sided tape. 
This will make handling the minis for the following painting steps a whole lot easier. Now I didn't want to go in completely blind when going about painting these guys. I knew I needed a plan, so to play it safe, I decided to try painting 1 out of 10 warriors as a test model. This gave me some wiggle room to figure out the color scheme, the painting steps, and most importantly, give me a shopping list of colors and supplies that I still needed. To figure out the colors and what paints to buy, I just watched a ton of YouTube until I found a general idea of the process and a color scheme I could commit to. Luckily, I had a lot of paint I needed already on hand, so I didn't need to purchase too much from my local game store. Worst case scenario was that if I didn't like how it turned out, I could always strip the model and restart until I found the right painting steps to get a result I liked. Luckily for me, I was happy with my first attempt. I think he came out great and definitely has a bit of that grim dark about him. Probably not winning any competitions, but definitely not bad for a first go. If I played 40k, I wouldn't mind having this on my tabletop. Now, all I had to do was translate this same theme to the other 9 Necron Warriors. To do this, I simply retraced and recorded my painting steps by simply writing them down, and then formatted that into a step-by-step -step list. The idea is to achieve visual consistency across all 10 minis. Having the list in front of me also means I can work efficiently and keep myself laser focused on each step. I can now work on the other 9 minis all at once via a batch painting assembly line process. With my list in hand and my Necrons fully prepped and assembled, I knew I had a decent bit of painting to do. So let me show you how I got these guys to a somewhat tabletop ready standard. Before blocking in the main colors, I first base coated all the minis with Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black Primer through my airbrush. Mr. Surfacer is a lacquer, solvent-based primer that I've thinned down so that it gives me a nice, smooth surface to start with. It dries matte, levels nicely, and doesn't clog the details. And since I'll be working with quite a bit of metallics, it will be a nice base coat to start from. You can also easily do any black spray can primer for models. Uh, Citadel Chaos Black, or even Mr. Surfacer, what I'm using now, comes in a spray can form. Just make sure the model is nicely covered. I just use my airbrush because it's what I have on hand and it's convenient. So, no worries for those of you who don't have an airbrush yet, this is the only time I'll be using it in this video. Just make sure you're doing your spraying outside or in a well-ventilated area and your lungs are protected with a respirator to be on the safe side. Anyways, once I've given my primer a couple hours to dry, we can begin painting by hand. I began painting the minis by giving them an all-over dry brushing with Lead Belter from Citadel Paints using my standard hobby dry brush from the Army Painter. Lead Belcher is sort of this gunmetal or dark steel tone, great for the inner skeleton of these Necrons. For those of you who are new to the concept, dry brushing is a technique where you apply paint to the bristles of your brush, and then remove most of the paint by dabbing the excess off on either a texture palette or paper towel, leaving behind only a small amount. We then apply paint on our model and build up in gentle layers by brushing back and forth, trying to catch a detail with our brushes. Depending on the hardness and shape of the bristles of your brush, you can get softer or harsher edges. The bristles on this brush aren't super soft, but they aren't super harsh either. Somewhere in between. I'm also not trying to be too precise here. I'm just moving the brush in all directions, trying to catch all those raised edges and details on the mini. This will give that inner skeleton a nice worn look and block in that color for it at the same time. This will also help reveal all the details across the mini and make it easier to see as we begin layering in future steps. Also, for those curious, for any metallic paints I'll be using, I won't be using a wet palette. Just a cup of water, standard steel palette, paper towels, and a piece of ceramic tile to test my brush strokes. As you can see, now we can see all the details on our mini a little better and we have our inner skeleton blocked in. Once we've let that sit to dry a bit, we're ready to move on to the next step. Switching to a round brush, in this case, the regiment brush from the army painter, I'm now going to carefully layer Rune Lord Brass to block in the outer armor of the Necrons, but ignoring the skull and shoulder armor. I'm only painting the arms, hands, legs, top part of feet, and ribcage armor. I'm leaving the inner skeleton alone. But if I did make any mistakes, I can easily come back with Lead Belcher and tidy up those slips. I'm also taking care to keep my brush moist, but not flooded. My paint thinned to a good brushing consistency, but also not overloading my brush with paint. I always test my brush strokes on a piece of tile that I keep next to my palette. I got these covered in about two to three thin layers with a minute or two to dry in between. This is to reduce any visible brush strokes and give us a nice smooth opacity. Luckily working in an assembly line style allows ample time between each model to let the layers dry properly. Basically, one thin layer, move on to the next, and so on, until we have good coverage. I took my time here and turned the models around as needed to be as comfortable as possible. With the Rune Lord Brass done, 
I then come back with Lead Belcher and tidy up any of the inner skeleton that didn't get enough coverage. I also paint any coiled cable details and the outer front frame of the guns that make this sort of bayonet shape using Lead Belcher as well. Once all that is done and dry, it's time to paint the shoulder armor plates and skull face plate. I carefully paint those areas in with Canoptic Alloy, in the same fashion, trying to be as neat as possible. With that round of metallics blocked in, it's time to bust out the wet palette. I also dumped out my paint water cup and refilled it with clean water as I don't want any metallic flakes contaminating my next painting steps. I also took this opportunity to clean all my brushes and my palettes as well. I used Vallejo model color cold white to carefully paint the eyes, gun barrel orbs, as well as any of the round bits on the canoptic scarabs that are hanging out on some of the necrons. I try to be as neat as possible, but if I make any mistakes, I go back with my previous colors to tidy that up. With all that white blocked in, I now come in with Abaddon Black and paint the gun coil casing, as well as the barrel surrounding the orbs. Now it's finally time to start base coating some green. Using Warpstone Glow, which is kind of a middle green, I blocked in all the smooth cable details on the body and the gun. Once Warpstone Glow was all done, any of these cable details that had exposed wires, which are usually around the tips or ends of the thicker cables, got a layer of Moot Green, which is a lighter green, in order to give the impression of glowing light source within these thicker cables. I also went ahead and began highlighting some of the dark green details with Moot Green in certain spots to create more visual interest as well, for the same purpose. At this point, I went back and forth checking each model to make sure I didn't miss any of the previous painting steps, and that everything was nicely blocked in. I then gave everything a couple minutes to fully dry. Then, using Tesseract Glow, which is a technical paint that sort of behaves like a wash or contrast paint, I go over all the areas of the mini that I painted cold white. What this does is create a glowing effect, which gives off a really cool look to the eyes and the orbs of the guns. I also glaze a bit of this over the green cables to unify all the green and just give it a bit more vibrance. Tesseract Glow seems to have a bit of yellow mixed in, and this really brings some warmth to the rest of the green. Next, it's finally time to apply some shades. Starting off with Null Oil, which is basically a black wash, I glaze over the details that were painted in Lead Belcher as well as carefully pinwash all the panel lines, cracks, recesses, skeleton, and ribcage armor of the minis to begin to add some definition. After that null oil is dried, I then do an all over wash on all the armor panels with Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash, to create a slight filter to give the impression of some tarnish over the outer armor. Following this, I then come in with some Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a bit of a reddish brown wash, but I only glaze thin layers on half sections of the armor. This is just to add a bit of variety and some subtle depth to the tarnished armor. I do this sort of randomly and not in any particular fashion. In some spots, I was able to achieve sort of a small gradient between Agrax Earth Shade and Reichland Flesh Shade. I went back and forth between these two washes as needed until I got the desired amount of grittiness I wanted. After all the washes were dry, I did a very light dry brushing of Mithril Blade from Tooth & Coats Paints over some prominent mechanical details of the minis. This is a bright silver, and I only picked out certain spots and raised edges, being careful not to undo my previous work from all the washes. This was just a gentle layer and not meant to cover the entire miniature. Switching back to my smaller round brush, I carefully picked out and edge highlighted only the most prominent features using Mithril Blade, as well as pick out the ank on the chest of all the Necrons. Once that was complete, I then did a light dry brushing of Dawnstone over the gun casing I previously painted in a bad and black. This gave the casing a bit of a scratchy weathering, but also a quick and dirty edge highlight. Finally, to finish off the glowing green details, I went back in with Warpstone Glow and did a slightly thick edge highlight, particularly around the orbs of the gun casing. Then, using Moot Green, I went over all those details I just highlighted with Warpstone Glow with an even thinner edge highlight. This is meant to accentuate the glow of the orbs and the eyes just a bit more and give the impression of light being casted on the surrounding areas. With Moot Green still on my palette, I also did a central highlight running through the thick green cable details once more. Finally, with a 50-50 mix of cold white and Moot Green, I carefully went over the green details once more and added the brightest highlights by adding dots and thin lines to areas where I wanted the green to appear the brightest. It was at this point I went back and forth with green tones and tidied everything up until I was happy with the results. With all that green finished, I'm calling the paintwork on the miniatures finished, but I still have one last thing to do, and that's finish the bases. This will really tie everything together and really make the mini stand out. I kept it simple, 
First, I needed to build up some texture. So to do this, I first spread some medium consistency CA glue with a decent working time on the bases, being careful not to get any of the tops of the feet of the Necrons and the outer rim. After all that glue is spread, I simply sprinkled some cat litter covering the glue and then tapped off the excess. To get the glue to dry quickly, I applied a CA accelerator from a dropper bottle over the litter to instantly cure the glue and bond the litter to the surface. If I needed more texture in certain spots, I simply repeated the process until I was satisfied. Once everything was completely dried, I then went over the bases with a texture paste from Citadel called Astro Granite, which is kind of like this rocky, mud, ground texture once dried. I applied this with a metal paint stirrer from Tamiya, using it like a spatula, being careful to cover the base completely and manipulate it around to get some nice unevenness. It has a decent working time, so if I got any on the rim of the base or on the Necron's feet where I didn't want any, I could simply wipe away with my finger or a cotton bud. Now, it's really important to make sure at this stage that everything completely dries. To be safe, I left the minis to dry overnight. Once those are dry, using Dawnstone, I gave all the base textures a very heavy dry brushing to unify the colors and bring everything together. I also let some of the Dawnstone hit some of the Necron's feet to give the impression of them getting dirt kicked up. After letting that Dawnstone dry, I then applied a black wash over the bases with Null Oil to give the recessed areas of the ground some more definition, making sure to also let some of it touch the feet of the minis. Once that wash has dried, to add just a bit more definition to the ground texture, I did a dry brushing of Screaming Skull, which is sort of a warm, bone-colored off-white, to really make the raised edges pop out. Finally, to finish my minis, I painted the rims of the bases a bad and black, taking care to be as neat as possible. Obviously, I can paint them whatever color I want. I just chose to use flat black. This is up to the individual's personal preference. And with that, I officially completed my first 10 40k miniatures. What have I got myself into? Overall, I think these came out great. Considering my main goal was to pursue an interest I've had on the back burner for a while, these results far exceeded my expectations. While I don't think I'll be winning any golden demons or anything like that anytime soon, I'm glad I took the plunge, as I found another facet of model making that I quite enjoy, which, in my opinion, is the most important aspect of a hobby like this. Lately, I've been feeling like people often fixate on negativity and elitism, and in doing so, forget the most vital part. Fun. Enjoying yourself, which goes without saying, I had a lot of fun making these little guys. And in researching these topics, I learned new skills that I feel really opened up some doors into my creative pursuits, which is great. If there's anything to take away from this, it's self-improvement through this creative introspection. I feel myself evolving real time as an artist, and that's a great feeling. I also get to have these cool little Necrons on my shelf. That being said, as a newcomer to the platform, it's really easy to feel imposter syndrome, like I'm not doing enough, or hitting every topic, or just not representing every bit perfectly, and that's okay. Probably normal. It's why I think even more so that getting out of my comfort zone really gets me out of a rut and reignites me with inspiration and excitement. So moral of the story, try new things folks. Remember to have fun. Life is too short. Anyways, enough of my sentimental sob story. Remember to stay safe, be nice to each other, build stuff, paint stuff. See you in the next video. Here's the finished Necrons.